trying to make this video, my son and I, on uh, how to put different kinds of seats in a Land Cruiser. I know a lot of people out there have really hard seats from the factory because they weren't taken care of and they get uh, sun bleached real hard and they start to tear and rip. So we went through the junkyard one afternoon for four hours trying to find the perfect seat that would fit in here really well. This, these seats have a narrow track, so most seats have a wider track, so you're real limited on what you can use. And we found that the PT Cruiser, hey, the one good thing about a PT Cruiser, they have nice seats and they fit pretty much in a Land Cruiser. So this video is gonna be about how we fit our PT Cruiser seats in our Land Cruiser. So we'll start first by just taking the original seat out. I got these seat covers on here just because you can see everybody that's got a Land Cruiser with a leather seat, they got this business going on. Number 14 in a socket, it's all you need. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so when you got your seat out, this is what you're gonna see. Now, I was fortunate enough to have two extra seats that we got in this Land Cruiser that were totally trashed. They're left out in the open for a couple years in the, in the woods and they were growing mold and everything. Uh, so what I did though, before we trashed the seats, is I, I knew I was gonna put different seats in there so we took apart the seat tracks. Now, if you don't have an extra pair of seats, you're gonna have to tear apart the seats that you just took out. So essentially what you're gonna do is you want this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. And you can see I got them all right here from my old seats that I took off already. Since we didn't film that, I'll kind of tell you what you need to do. You'll see these little buttons right here. Basically what you're gonna have to do, what I found out was these. So this is an old track and after a little bit of trial and error, the, I found the easiest way was to take your angle grinder and to go in between the tracks here, and you'll see how these line up. When you flip them over, you'll see that there's like a bit that holds this on right here, and then there's usually a spot weld that lives right here. So what I found is easiest to do is just to grind your way through this piece right here, and then also make a deep grind right here too that'll grind to that spot weld and then take like a, a chisel and a hammer and just give it a good whack and it'll just pop right off. And then you're left with this. So you basically want to get all four of those off your seat track. Another thing I should mention is when you take these off, you kind of want to make note of the orientation of how they go on the track. So as you can see with mine, I labeled them driver side one, D1, D2, uh, D3, and D4. So if you look here, on my seats. I labeled this one as number two. So number two is the side with the seat belt. You can see how that matches up. The number one would be the one without the seat belt. Uh, driver's side number four would be the front on the seat belt side. And three would be the front on the, the uh, not seat belt side. So once you have that all figured out, then we can come over to our PT Cruiser seat. Now the PT Cruiser seat, you're gonna get all this bracketry that, that goes on here on these seats like, like so. And it basically, just take all this crap off. You just take this off. But, save your hardware, because these are expensive and nice bolts. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the front ones to the existing captured nuts that are already here. So we'll take our driver's side number four, it's a small one which goes on the seat belt side. So we look here is our, this is our seat belt side. So I'll go ahead and put these on like so. And I, what I do is I just finger tighten them down because we're gonna have to do a little bit of test fitting before we weld these guys on. Do that one. Do you guys like my headband? It's about 100 degrees here in Kansas right now, so if I don't wear this, I'll just get a bunch of sweat in my eyes. It smells good. Isn't that right, Isaac? <laughs> All right. 
So we got our front ones on. And what I found with the passenger side that we already did, if you come over here and look, you can see we have our passenger seat in and Ooh. how nice it looks there. And it's got that nice uh, armrest to use. And I guess while we're here, I can show you that the only kind of bad thing about it is if you want to get into your center console, this armrest is pretty dang close. You can still get in there, but it'll kind of run into that armrest. So, you know, you could just stow it up if you don't have anybody there, easy access to that. But other than that, they fit in there just right. And they are very comfortable. They don't quite match perfectly, but I wanted to be comfortable. And they're manual seats, which is nice too. You don't have to worry about all the motors and electronics stuff breaking on you. So what we found on that passenger seat is these captured nuts don't fit. We gotta go three inches down, which puts us about right here. So what we'll do is we'll drill a hole about right here, and then we'll mount these brackets like so. So that's what we're gonna work on next. So we took a couple measurements here, and what I found out was on the seat belt side, if I measure from the outside of that front one to the middle of the eye, I get about 16 and 3 8 inches. On the other side, if you measure that, you get about 16 and a half. So what we did is we just took our legs here, make sure we got the right one in the right place, and then we just basically did our measurements from here to get 16 and 3 8 from the outside of this to right about the center line and that bolt hole. The passenger side one, we did this, uh, we did this side 16, we did both sides 16 and 3 8 and one of them wound up a little short from the hole and we had to make that hole a little bigger so it would line up. So hopefully we won't make the same mistake on this driver's side one. So we got our marks made, we get our punch, and I think you know the rest. Now you see we got our holes drilled out here. I went a little too far, made them a little bit too big, so don't make the same mistake that I did there, but it'll be okay because we'll just we're gonna be welding these down nice and tight to the seat base. So take your bolt that you took off the seat before and feed it through here. And then I had to go to the hardware store and pick these up. I can't remember number 10, one, two, five pitch, I think. I can't remember. But Basically, take that bolt with you to the hardware store and find some nuts that fit on there. And then we'll make those nice and tight. So now we have these finger tight and we can see how they fit first. And then what we'll do is we'll set it in the car and we'll get everything to line up. And then we'll take our paint pin and we'll make marks on where they go. And then we'll take it out, line up all those marks. And then we get to do the fun stuff. We'll get to weld these all down. We're just gonna nail ice bead down here alongside and around the front. We'll weld these screws and bolt or nuts and bolts together and we'll make everything nice and tight. So we will go see how they fit in the car now. All right, so next what we're gonna do, we got the seat in here, and like I said, those uh, little supports that we're mounting to the floor should be, you know, finger tight. And you can tighten them up a little bit with a socket so they don't like wobble around on you when you try to put the seat in. And you sit them in and then you basically just turn them a little bit, whichever way, inboard or outboard that need to go so the bolts fit in. And so you can see we have this one is in there and then our far one back here. Get it in here. Or, really tough right there. Far one, you can see it right here. Our far one is is in. And a, and a good trick on this is is don't um, tighten these down super tight because then it's harder for the seat to move. So start all the bolts finger tight, and then line everything up. And then once you have everything lined up, go ahead and tighten the bolts down. We'll come around to the back. 
So for the back, you're gonna wanna move the seat all the way forward so you have access to the back. And you can see uh, on these, you can see how, if you look at this one, it's not quite straight. So you can see here, my finger, this bracket is a little angled on the seat track, which is fine, but this is all just part of lining it up. Once we have this lined up, we'll mark everything and then we'll weld it to where it needs to be. So just do the same on these back ones and get them all lined up and take your paint pen or magic marker, whatever you have, and then mark uh, where the brackets go. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so we changed our mind a little bit after the first uh, experience we had with the passenger seat. Essentially what I did was I marked all that, like I told you with that paint pen, I marked everything. And we had a little bit of problems with that seat fitting in after I welded everything. It was, it was harder to fit in. So I thought it might be easier just to go ahead and do a little tack weld on these brackets so they don't move around while it's still bolted down in the car. So that way it eliminates any uh, moving around of those feet. So doing our safety, we got our, our uh, fire extinguisher just in case. And I don't have like welding blanket or anything, but I kind of try to put towels down, you know, so hopefully the sparks won't uh, burn holes in anything. So, and I know I'm not exactly dressed for welding really, but we'll, we'll be all right. We'll just do a little, we're just doing a little spot weld here, so. Okay, so now we got the seat out and we transferred over to the bench and you can see our little spot welds held these on here. So what I did is then I just tightened all of our bolts up nice and snug and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll weld these and we'll put a little weld on the nut so it doesn't back off. Um, and then we'll cross our fingers and hope we did everything right and hopefully it'll go back into uh, the truck. Now it's your there's going to be a little bit of flexing that you're going to have to do pushing the tracks in and out because once it gets all tightened down and you unloosen it, the, they that kind of, you know, the tension's released from the track. So there'll be some pushing and stuff that we have to do, but once we get the bolt in there and started, we should be okay. Now I'll warn you on this. We had a problem on the back seat where one of the holes didn't quite line up and uh, we accidentally got a bolt cross threaded into the captured nut and uh, ruined one of our bolts and the captured nut so we had to bust out the tap and die set and retap it to a different size which hopefully you won't have that problem but all is well now for us now we got that fixed but anyway we're gonna go to the welding camera and we'll do these welds real quick and we'll see how it fits in the truck Okay, since well, we got everything welded up pretty well while we let that cool off, we're gonna work on taking our seat belt, uh, what do you call it, female receptacle or whatever, we're gonna take it out. And there's a little bit of fabrication we gotta do to it too. Okay, so apparently there's a little hidden screw back here on the back side you gotta take off. And then that'll allow that piece to come apart. So when we got rid of our old seats, we remembered to take one of these off, the old seat, and that's what I used on the passenger side, and we forgot to take the other one off, so basically we're gonna have to take this one. So what we get to do with this, let's in here. This isn't quite long enough to reach, it's too short to reach on this seat. As you can see, if we were to mount it, see it's not quite long enough. So what we did on the other seat is we basically 
welded these two pieces together like so to extend that out and make it longer so it would fit through. So we're gonna weld this up and we will show you what it looks like when we're done. So apparently the, I just found this out, the PT Cruiser seats, doesn't look like it has a, a sensor for when your seatbelt's plugged in or not. They must do that some other way. So I don't think we're gonna be able to retrofit this in. So what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna short those two wires together. Hopefully that'll make it uh, so the light stays off. Just, uh... So here we go, we got that. Another thing that you can do are these little tabs here on the side, we're not gonna need these. So you might be able to just to break those off like so. Okay. So we've taken those off now. So another thing is you can see how these are curved a little bit. We want to straighten this out a little bit this way so it fits in and doesn't rub against the seat. So just put it in your vise and just kind of give it a little bit of a push. Now you can see pretty straight and then now we can get it. All right, so we kind of fit this in and basically just took my marker and kind of marked it where it needs to be. There's like a, some kind of rubberized undercoating Oh, another thing I should tell you, the original PT Cruiser one has a nylon webbing that attaches to this that goes to the uh, female receiver. So you'll have to cut that nylon webbing off. Just take your bench grinder or whatever, we're gonna grind all this uh, plastic coating off of here and here so we can do some welding. tough stuff what the wire brush has a hard time getting it off sometimes So the general idea here is this will mount here. Make sure that your red press button is facing out. If you got it this way, it's gonna be hard to get your seatbelt undone. So you want it to be flipped like so. So basically, what I do is I kind of use this edge right here as a guide, you know? Actually, that, that second, I think on the passenger side one, I trim that down a little bit. So you can see how it fits Nice and neat right there. And we'll just uh, clamp that down with a vice grip and we will just weld it to basically be, what we're gonna weld everything. We'll weld right around here. We'll weld this full and we'll flip it over and we'll weld the back side and flip it full so it'll be like one big gigantic chunk of metal. Hopefully this won't melt in the meantime. The passenger side did not have that, so. So my welder, it's an old Lincoln SP100T. Seems to be it likes to be at a setting about D on the heat and about four on the wire speed for all this welding that I've kind of been doing. Now, I don't claim to be a good welder by any means, but, uh, you know, hopefully it'll work out. a little bit so we I don't think there's anything inside that seat belt you can damage but I this is getting pretty warm I don't want to melt anything so we'll let that cool off and do the other side all right we let it uh, cool down a bit and it got pretty those wires got pretty hot I don't think they melted through hopefully they'll be okay but beware of that uh, when you're doing this side
Okay, so this is your trim piece that's gonna come off the PT Cruiser. It would go on like so. Now the problem that we run into on a Land Cruiser is this part right here runs into the transmission tunnel uh, and then the seat won't scoot all the way up. So I just decided I would cut that off and make it look like so. You don't really see that anyway since it's right up against the transmission hump. So put our seatbelt in and the seatbelt. On the driver's side one, I was able just to cut this piece off, but on the passenger side one, I had to cut out this kind of like this. You'll see whenever you get in there and cutting this stuff out, how it's gonna fit best for you. So just a little note on what I did to get that out of the way. And I just used a pair of like uh, yellow handled sheet metal cutters. That, and I, I scored it first with a, uh, like a box cutter you know, draw a line where you want to cut it and score it with the box cutter. And you can kind of just do this and it'll break right on that line. So that's the way I did it. All right, we got these uh, welded up. We're gonna take some solvent and just kind of clean everything up. And then we'll throw a little bit of paint on it. Just to keep it from rusting. I like to use a, a, a tractor paint that I get at the tractor supply store. It seems to be it's made by Rust-Oleum, I think, but it seems to be a little bit better, a little more robust, sticks a little better, lasts a little longer. I get it at our uh, farm supply store here. So. All right, do that real quick. You're good to go. This is the stuff. I like to use. I mean, I've used Pour 15 and Eastwoods. I mean, I've used all kinds of different paints and stuff, and those are so hard to use and so hard to get. I found that this stuff works pretty good as long as you have a clean surface to work with. It sticks pretty well. And it's cheap, and I can get it in town. All right, so here's our buckle that we got all welded. Basically, just weld anything that you see, you know, weld the outsides and fill up the inside and just kind of make it one piece. And, and uh, sorry, I didn't get a picture of it before I painted it, but we threw a coat of paint on it, threw a coat of paint on these dudes here, and we'll let this set overnight uh, and dry. And then tomorrow we'll pick back up and we'll get it in the car and hopefully everything will go good and we'll have new PT Cruiser seats in our Land Cruiser. See you later. Hey, we're back. We have all the paints dried up and we put our seat belt uh, receiver back on here. Just get your Torx bolt. And I added a little blue Loctite to it so it won't back out. And here's our cover. We'll put our cover back on and it looks like it doesn't want to fit. We're gonna to have to do some trimming. So we will see how that goes. We'll be right back for that. Okay, so I just kind of set it on here and drew what looked like might be enough to cut out so this will lay flat. And then I just take like a razor knife and score my line that I drew on there and then you can kind of just work it back and forth and it should just kind of tear off like so. I want to trim a little bit of that off and just get some side cutters here. Yeah, 
What do you think, Isaac? Looks good. So I think I need to come off a little bit more here. Okay, so it's not rocket science. Basically, just use whatever method you find works best to trim this up. I found a, a file and a bench grinder helps to kind of shave some of the plastic off there. And we'll just button it back up. You want to probably do this while the seat's off because it'll be hard to get to if you try to do it with the seat in there. Okay. All right, next step, we'll get ready to put it into the truck and hopefully see how it fits. Okay, so we tested this wiring here trying to figure out what makes it work. It looks like uh, you'd want to go black and white from the Land Cruiser to the black wire on the PT Cruiser seat and the blue and black wire to the red and green wire. Now, I had an extra plug from uh, my donor seats that I cut off that I'm just going to use in place. Just a little plug right in. If you don't have that extra plug, you'll just have to, you know, use some, you know, Pick your method. If you want to solder it in there, cool. If you want to use some of those quick uh, connects, you know, to tap in, that's cool too, but that's what you want to do. So, you can see here. Oh, it's not going to do it now on me. Uh, our connections were just a little shabby. There they go. It works like that. Okay. So, we'll get that fixed up and then we'll button them down and see what happens. All right. I'm well, enjoying this lovely 125% humidity, 100 degrees, and eight o'clock Kansas weather so we got the seat in there and we got everything lined up it's gonna you're gonna it's gonna take some like I said before some moving and, and kind of pulling and that kind of stuff and try not to tighten them all down one up at a time you need to leave them get them all started and leave them loose and then start to tighten them down It'll be easier to fit in that way so we got the front two tight we're gonna move back here to get the back ones there we go here yeah up for your short little wife that drives the Land Cruiser now she can see over the hood down and I'm about 6'1 and I probably gained a good inch of leg room from the uh, electric ones and this is a serious plus this armrest is awesome there you have it. That's how you put in a pair of PT Cruiser seats in a Land Cruiser. I want to show you my assistant here that's been helping me out. Hey guys. That's my boy Isaac. He's been doing all the video stuff for me, so thanks, buddy. No problem, man. All Happy right. to do it. Well, tune in for next time for a new tip for the Land Cruiser. See you guys later.